The national championships of India just got over a few days ago and the winner of the tournament was Karthik Venkat Raman. As you can see on the picture, Karthik is in the middle. We have Abhijit Gupta who finished second and Vishak who finished third. This is Karthik uh, carrying his huge winner's trophy and also a cash prize of rupees 6 lakh. The tournament was very strong. There were many grandmasters who took part. As you can see, this is the starting rank. We had Sethu Raman, Vaibhav Suri, Abhijit Gupta, Leon Mendonza, Vishak, Shyam Sundar, Karthik, Swapnil, Mitra Baguha, and many strong IMs as well. So it was a very, very keenly fought national championship. And in the end, it was Karthik who won the event with a score of 10 out of 13, half point ahead of the field showing some great chess, being undefeated. And this is how he played. He, he managed to uh, beat some very strong players towards the end. If you see, he won three of his games against Dhananjay, Abhijit Gupta and Kostav Chatterjee. And that really propelled him to the top. So in this video, I would like to talk with our national champion Karthik and get his thoughts on how he managed to achieve this amazing feat. Hello, Karthik. Hi, Sagar. How are you doing? I am very well, Karthik. Uh, what a performance. National champion of India is a very, very tough uh, tournament and you managed to, to win it. How, 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 is, how is the feeling? Yeah, it feels great. Uh, more than winning the nationals, I'm uh, excited to play in the World Cup, uh, which I feel is more important for me. So, uh, I'm happy for that. You Only one player qualifies to the World Cup, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, only the player, uh, only the person who wins the national championship uh, qualifies to the World Cup. Amazing. So, so that will be tremendous. And you might face one of the best players in the world. You know, that could be your first round pairing. Like I remember once Akash won the national championship in 2012. And he faced uh, Karuana. Shabhi, I think. Yeah, 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 he faced Karuana there. So, who knows? It's going to be great fun. And also, you won a cash prize of 6 lakh rupees. That's quite a huge one. Yeah, that's quite a bonus. Uh, I didn't play for the money, but uh, uh, it's like a bonus uh, which I could use it uh, to improve my chess and so on. So, uh, Karthik, before we go to chess... Uh, we want to know a bit more about you. I believe you live in Tirupati. Is that correct? Yeah, right. Uh, I live in Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh. And and what are you doing right now? You were studying BCom earlier. Have you fin? I think you have finished it. Uh, what do you do now? Uh, currently, I'm doing uh, MBA in uh, SRM University, Chennai. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Is it is it a, is it like a remote course or you have to attend it? Uh, I'm attending uh, just the exams, uh, the semester exams. Uh, other than that, uh, the college has been very supportive and uh, uh, they're letting me focus on chess. So, so you, you're doing MBA in what? Uh, I think finance, I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> it could be uh, uh, some other thing as well, but I think it's finance. Okay. Okay. So you're doing MBA in finance. You would like to do it and you are also playing chess. Do you also coach do you are you also into training uh, no i don't coach anyone during the pandemic uh, i tried it but uh, but then uh, i wanted to focus on playing so i stopped it also okay so you you stopped uh, training uh, and yeah. you also had a youtube channel i think you had started and you were very regular with it you did many uh, interviews and podcast like things right yeah during the pandemic uh, I I was uh, like not doing uh, like I was practicing chess, but other than that, I had a lot of free time. So I started a YouTube channel and then started interviewing uh, some grandmasters, knowing their story and all. Yeah, I uh, believe I believe you love YouTube a lot. Like you yourself spend a lot of time on that platform. So I guess you wanted to do something there. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, I think other than uh, chess, uh, YouTube is my Next main thing, like, uh, I spend a lot of time on YouTube, so uh, I just wanted to start a channel and see how it goes. 
fantastic so from what i can understand uh, kartik is that chess is right now the main thing in your life you are uh, 23 years old you are rated around 2500 uh, so how are you actually working on chess do you work on chess every day do you have a trainer with you how is it uh like currently i don't have a trainer but uh, i'm part of, i'm part of this uh, uh online website called killer chess training uh, of jakabagan mm. so uh, i don't attend the classes there daily but i do the uh, there's something called homework club uh, which i do killer regularly. homework Oh, yeah, homework killer. or is it killer homework? Yeah, I I know yeah, that homework. every week you get one sheet sort of to solve. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, it's like two hours of suffering or three hours of suffering. <laughs> is that And helpful then, to you? Yeah, basically, uh, like I joined uh, before Asian Continental uh, in September or something like that. I tried for one month. and then after that i played like three tournaments which i think uh, in asian i finished 7th uh, uh, tied for second wow and uh, in commonwealth i think i got a fifth place and uh, here i won the national so in general i feel like my calculation skills have improved little bit but uh, there's lot lot of room for improvement but uh, yeah it's uh, i think it has been helpful to an extent so so for people who are looking for trainers but cannot afford a full fledged trainer you know like to work with i guess cost might be one of the main reasons right that you uh, decided yeah, to yeah exactly like i was also trying to find a coach around uh, september time and i asked few people and they were saying like uh, 80 dollars per hour or something like 2600 grandmasters and uh, 80 80 dollars uh, i thought is it's a bit uh, expensive for one hours correct so, and i was looking for alternatives uh, i thought of joining pro chess as well but uh, i thought let's uh, give it killer chess uh, i thought let's give it a try and i liked it so fantastic so so for all those who are interested can go there and get the homework and they can uh, solve it every day and then you get points right something like that yeah jacob agard himself uh, corrects uh, the sheets and uh, sometimes so he gives the key feedback also like you need to work on this or you need to work on that and so on fantastic that's wonderful to know and uh, kartik apart from that uh, do you work anything on your own like you do you read books do you watch videos do you uh, do anything else Yeah other than that uh, I try to work on openings and also like I try to uh, uh, solve puzzles uh, online or through some uh, calculation books and so on and also sometimes I watch videos uh, on specific topics so that's about it uh, I guess I do that repeatedly Do do you follow Chess Base India's videos like some of the World Rapid and Blitz right now that we covered and so on? Yeah, World Rapid. I think uh, I watched most of the videos, if not everything. Okay. But other than that, like I don't follow it uh, regularly, but uh, a few videos I watch. Fantastic. That's very nice to know. Uh, Karthik, let's go to your tournament. because if we just have a look at the trajectory of what you did uh, at the event uh, and this is these are your uh, performances here i think the tournament started off well for you you were on 2 out of 2 then you had 3 draws which is like you slowed down quite a bit uh, at that point you were on 3 and 1/2 out of 5 so you might have been a little bit worried at that point Yeah, actually, when I started the event, uh, I wanted to win the tournament. Uh, but then this three draws uh, uh, lowered my expectations to a bit, uh, and then I I just uh, focused on uh, just uh, the next game or something like that. Uh, and those three draws also were uh, uh, quite annoying in the sense uh, that I did not get much play and. all the the first two rounds i won it was very difficult games and it took me like 4 5 yes, hours yes. to win those two i rounds. know it's all end game you were converting those small yeah, yeah. advantages 
yeah it took me like 4 5 hours and uh, it was quite depressing the first five rounds and then i went two rounds and again uh, i think i made two draws if i'm not wrong yes you you beat uh, pushkar dhere and utkal ranjan sahu and then you were against these two strong players from west bengal aroniak and mitrabha which uh, which you drew but then came this very critical next three rounds yeah uh, against dhananjay i think it was my longest uh, game in the tournament i thought uh, i got a nice advantage in the opening but i failed to convert it convincingly and i think it might have taken like 6 hours and even when he resigned i thought he would play for another uh, 30 minutes or so okay so that yeah, was a long game just... and then you came to these two crucial games which i want to see with you one is with abhijit gupta and the second is with uh, uh, kostav our india's Kostav's. latest i wouldn't say latest on that day he was the latest like and then within yeah. couple of days we had another grandmaster in pranesh so india 78 gm you beat him uh, and then you drew the last round so one question before we go to the games is that playing such long games have you been working on your physical fitness yeah like i think before the pandemic i was like i don't know maybe around 90 kg or something uh a bit over, overweight and then i uh, during the pandemic i was totally free so uh, i started working out and like i think i lost around 20 kg uh, what wow uh, but okay it, it was like over a period of one year or something but uh I lost around 20 kg and then I started playing tournaments and uh, I did not work out regularly but I kind of maintain now uh, I increased maybe 5 kg or something but it's like uh, more like uh, maintenance basis uh, but in general I do work out more than normal chess players so in that way a little bit better I would say hmm. but i am not a regular uh, exercise uh, person but but you seem to have made great use of the pandemic i believe when a period where people lost motivation to do things and they were like what to do we have nothing i think you started a youtube channel you worked on your fitness what what was your motivation to do all of this no uh, regarding the way uh, uh, weight loss uh, i always wanted to reduce weight but uh, if i when i go to tournaments and uh, i see all this burgers pizzas i, I couldn't control same with me <laughs> and uh, that was the reason i my weight was always high okay and uh, during the pandemic uh, i i only ate home food even if uh, some of those were unhealthy it was like cooked at home so it was better than those um, junk food i ate during the tournaments mm. and i used to work out all like five days a week or something like that uh, so in that way i was consistent and i reduced weight uh, and uh, youtube channel my initial i thought okay i thought i'll become a, a star in youtube and i learn money and so on but it didn't happen that way <laughs> <laughs> uh, well well you are and, you are earning money through chess so maybe uh, let some other people earn via youtube <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that was one of your uh, motivations that maybe you could make a career as a youtuber but that didn't work out i mean yeah, it, maybe it's not so easy to you have to work consistently then yeah we need to uh, work hard and like you are uh, basically an example of that so yes i mean in general i i i agree with you that there is a lot of consistent work needed but uh, i i do believe that being a chess player is way more difficult than being a youtuber so <laughs> and that to the national champion is is an amazing feat so karthik shall we look at uh, your game yeah sure sure so we will look at your game against abhijit gupta first Uh, a crazy game i would say uh, i went over it uh, lightly but i wanted to sort of get your thoughts on how it went so abhijit is one of india's top grandmasters uh, and when you approach this game were you going in with a fixed thing like okay do you need a draw play very solidly or were you like let's see what happens uh, i wanted to play 
like uh, in this tournament like i feel uh, like i uh, in general i feel my opening preparation is pretty decent but uh, if i have to say like two people who are better than me uh, who played in this tournament would be setraman and abhijit gupta mm. so i would, i was kind of little scared of his opening preparation uh, he has uh, like for example after d4 knight of 6 c4 e6 uh, he plays uh, nimzo and even in nimzo he plays f3 variation and he plays the samish uh, he used to play rubinstein uh, and uh, in this tournament he had also played i think uh, g3 systems and so on hmm. and this is only for nimzo uh, apart from this he also plays the catalan and uh, uh, so i had to prepare uh, so i thought i would go for something solid um and i prepared a system for catalan and for ragozin as well like knight c3 bishop b4 i was expecting this uh, queen a4 nc6 he also plays a3 here uh, i prepared for that and i prepared for e3 okay but since i had to look for all these things i didn't uh, my preparation was not that deep correct and uh, eventually he managed to surprise me uh, and so on but overall i wanted to play something solid uh, but at the same time uh, keep my uh chances open or something like that correct okay so he went you went castles he went queen c2 uh, yeah. rook e8 i believe this is one of the main lines in this system bishop d2 uh you went yeah. back bishop uh, f8 this was all uh, this is all very trendy and uh, my preparation was still uh, d knight b4 queen b1 takes takes b6 yes. and here yeah. a3 is the main move and uh, i had some preparation here hmm. but i just forgot about castles which is the most natural move in the position yeah, but yeah. since i had to uh, look at lot of options i just went through the games like a3 was played in like maybe 15 games so i only prepared a3 and here i at least i should have started thinking but uh, i think i played c5 pretty quickly which was a uh, like i wouldn't say mistake but from a practical perspective i would say bishop b7 is uh, yeah better. i was a bit surprised that you didn't play this very natural move and you went for c5 uh yeah the point was again i was trying to uh, like for example uh, if you, instead of castles if white plays a3 uh, the line goes like uh, bishop a6 Mm. and here yeah, bishop e2 is the main move but let's say bishop into a6 knight a6 uh, ca- castles black plays c5 mm. and i thought it would eventually transpose so i thought he would play ca- if i play c5 uh, he would go a3 bishop a6 i thought it would be a transposition <laughs> nice okay so that's that's the point why you chose c5 Yeah, yeah that, that was the reason i chose c5 but uh, at least i should have thought for uh, longer time uh, before going it mm. uh, going for it but uh, when he played d c5 i understood it's not so easy i would ideally want to take with the bishop but uh, i think knight e4 and uh, it's getting scary for black ah uh, you didn't like this also a3 b4 could come in and yeah also a3 b4 uh, white has the initiative here correct okay so you so... decided to take with the pawn now it's an isolated pawn Uh, which is not a great thing but uh, you also get like the open b file which is definitely something yeah right I, and this part of the game i thought you played well during the game at least like e4 uh here he is threatening e5 knight g5 and is trying to mate me with the so queen I here yeah prevented with h6 e, uh, rook d1 yeah here I, i think queen b6 is slightly inaccurate queen c7 i should have played but i never i didn't want to calculate this knight b5 always like i mean like uh, it's nothing probably but I, i thought i have to calculate it on every move so i instead went for queen b6 right queen b6 and uh, e5 e5 knight d5 knight e4 this uh, this is looking already dangerous because if you know he has threats like taking here pushing your knight away knight f6 queen sitting yeah. here I I I I'm sure you were a little bit worried at this point. No, I, at this point I was trying not to lose uh, within the hour. Uh, <laughs> I was just trying to uh, make sure uh, 
he doesn't made me at least in the next hour that was my uh, way of thinking mm. so and cool. actually uh, i when i played bishop a6 uh, i missed this bishop into a6 queen a6 bishop into h6 oh um, I, the point is i saw bishop h6 but i thought g into h6 i can take uh, but then this a3 move is there and uh, beautiful move right very quiet little move yeah and, and the, see the idea I and mean, just for the viewers is that if rook takes d5 you can take back with the knight so there is no knight f6 check anymore but if you push this supporter away then the threat uh, is now like if you go knight c6 to take take and knight f6 and knight f6, like queen yeah. f7 mate so, so bishop h6 must have come as a as a stunning blow to you to recover from this and to play the next move that you did is i think what won you this championship i would say no uh yeah um, probably but actually i saw this idea of sacrificing in different lines but not here uh, but when he played bishop h6 i had no choice but to go for this uh, i think it was uh, very I, i underestimated my own position i thought okay i would have some compensation but he would be better but i think already black is more or less fine yeah, which is much. quite surprising for me so i would like the viewers to sort of pause here and think what should black do in this position and uh, try to figure out what did karthik do yeah so karthik what was your move so i played c4 here uh, the basically white is threatening to play knight e g5 and uh, uh, queen h7 mate and i don't want to play g6 and stuff right. so c4 the idea is to play uh, knight d3 if mm-hmm. he plays knight g5 I, i just want to go knight d3 beautiful so that is the point of c4 and the knight is doing pretty well here because i mean b3 and all are also not possible there is uh, this c3 yeah. square h6 is hanging Okay, so he went bishop g5. Yeah, already he realized. Okay, uh, his position is. He started thinking actually. Till bishop into h6, he played pretty confidently. He played as if he was going to win the game. Uh, but then here he started slowing down, which uh, I thought, uh, which gave me a little bit confidence. And uh, yeah, I wanted to place my rooks on b8 and c8, and then play knight d3 and so on. Play for common. It, it looks easier to play as black now somehow, no? Yeah, true. So you went here, h5, knight yeah, d3, knight d3, and b. Uh, and this space, like the following three moves or so, I played very badly, uh, mm-hmm. which uh, uh, end end uh, which I got into a losing position later because of this three moves, I would say. Okay. here uh, the computer was saying like rook b4 uh, which i didn't even consider actually the idea is to maybe look at this knight yeah also the point if uh, point is if white plus queen c2 um, which he wants to do because he wants to bring the queen to the king side like queen e2 queen g4 or queen d2 somehow bring the uh, queen to the king side yeah but then here the point is uh, knight into e5 and knight into e5 now black will take on b3 uh, which i think is probably difficult to spot yeah very tough because uh, now the point is that the queen is attacked earlier you ca- could not take cb3 because the knight was hanging knight would be hanging on d3 here but by winning this pawn here by the way just for my curiosity is this position playable or yeah it could be playable but why it should be better like after a b3 for example uh, why does just a pawn up mm. and uh, you, you can get uh, get a similar position after taking on e5 i think i mean you would get a similar ending but without the pawn on e5 if you take on e5 first correct so, uh, so now if queen d3 you can take take and rook e4 and if you play queen b1 trying to keep this protected then b2 sort of traps the yeah. rook here nice very cool so rook b4 was very strong very tough to see you went but, queen uh, a3 yeah i played queen a3 with the idea of uh, trying to exchange the queens on b2 and then uh, trying to hold the end game or like i thought it should be pretty much fine for black mm. and in some cases like in the ending i can play c3 c2 and so on correct 
So that was my point. Uh, I think he played queen c2, right? Yeah, queen c2. And here actually I, I could have played queen b2, uh, which was my original plan. But then I got scared of unnecessary stuff. Like for example, here uh, I was scared of queen into b2, knight into b2, and rook b1. And uh, here, for example, I want to play c3, but knight into c3 is coming. Okay, yeah, right. And uh, yeah, rook into b2. And also, uh, for example, instead of uh, bishop a, here, uh, if I play bishop a3, hmm. I don't know what's the best move, but I was scared of bishop c1. Let's say c3. Here, for example, knight e1 uh, and then knight c2 or something. This does, now, this doesn't work because of take and knight into c3 so. and then black will win the action. Correct. So, knight e1 is what you were a little bit. Yeah, probably it's not. Sorry, probably it's not. Yeah, your voice went off. I don't know what happened all of a sudden. Yeah, now, now I think you're back. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if this is the best way, but during the game, I was scared of this. Hmm. But in reality, okay, for rook b1, I can just play knight d3 and uh, the position is more or less equal. Just uh, finishing this line after knight e1, uh, c2. Yeah, c2, I was thinking of rook into b2, bishop into b2, bishop into b2. Uh, and this pawn is not going anywhere. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And the... Uh, I don't know the uh, I, maybe I would have missed something in my calculation, but I didn't see a way through here. Right. So here you went instead of uh, c3. Uh, sorry, instead of this entire line. Yeah, I played knight b4, which is a very bad. Uh, because you uh, help him to come towards the. Yeah, king exactly. Side. My point was that. Uh, I can take on b3. Uh, what I played in the game, I didn't think I was losing actually while playing it. Hmm. I, I Here actually the computer says uh, white can play h6 and so on slowly and uh, you would be winning. Uh, I thought I would have some counter play like rook c2 is coming or queen c2, something like that. And uh, But okay, the computer says white is just winning here if he plays slowly. Yeah, like queen e3 and the queen, you are not able to uh, exchange anything now. Yeah, true. Wow, that's a great. So h6 was a great move here for Abhijit, but he was very keen on... Yeah, uh, I was also calculating uh, knight f6 or even bishop f6 is... Uh, bishop f6 kind of sacrifice. Uh, sacrifice it's I was also looks natural, yeah. Because... Yeah, bishop f6 is stronger than knight f6 actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I was calculating something like queen c4 and uh, trying to bring my queen to f4 where it would uh, defend uh, my king side. I, I I guess this is not still game over, right? Because he has to find many accurate moves. Yeah, exactly. Here the only uh, also he's not winning. I think he's better, but for that also he needs to play knight f g5, which is like okay, you want to bring the queen, but. You are playing a knight move uh, which yeah. uh, hinders tough. the queen, basically. Very tough, right. So, so I guess from a human perspective, knight f6 makes a lot of sense because after takes, he took with the bishop opening up the queen. Yeah, right. But uh, what I thought was, he doesn't actually have a threat. Like queen g5 check, I can just play king h7, I thought. Uh, so that was my point, but I underestimated. Uh, and also here, uh, rook c7 was a very strong move, I thought. Uh, like ideally, I want to play queen c4 and play queen f4. But then it allows queen g5 check and he can take on a7. King h7 and... Uh, Sorry, queen sorry. g5. King h7. King h7 and I was scared of uh, rook into a7 and rook into f7 threats are coming. So, which is scary. Rook c7 is a kind of a move which you get in those defensive books. You're like, yeah. the entire house is on fire, but you are just calmly going in and picking up your mobile phone and you're like, okay, <laughs> this is important. Yeah, exactly. Very nice move. I would say that another amazing move by you. Yeah, and then uh, here he played h6. Actually, here I kind of... Uh, uh, I would say, like, my initial uh, thought was knight d5. 
you went king uh, x7 but you were thinking knight d5 yeah. knight d5 but then i thought to okay, queen d3 queen d3 rook d3 i thought it should be fine for black but uh, uh bishop into h6 for example here yeah. hmm. like uh, it looked little scary but i thought black should be fine but then i thought here there is uh, no way i would win uh, and also i thought king h7 there are some winning chances but in reality it's a mistake and uh, i'm losing here uh, king h7 um, he played i think he uh, played rook b1, b1. Yeah. which is a mistake yeah he he is forcing your king to queen to go to a better square like yeah queen right c4. yeah after the game he was telling me maybe queen g5 would have won uh, with the idea of playing queen h5 and knight g5 mate right but here i i, I was preparing knight d5 and i didn't see a mate actually i thought black is fine here you will just take like for example knight into f6 here ef6 i didn't calculate further but i thought there something should be there yeah and also now he doesn't have a mating idea per se yeah he just wants to play knight g5 and take on f7 mm mm-hmm. and uh, okay but black has some time and we can probably defend yeah, uh, i didn't calculate like it. something like rook d7 maybe also uh, yeah but it looks looks scary though yeah it looks scary also for example maybe rook b5 or something ah, and sack nice nice I, i don't know if it works but i'm saying i thought i can manage like uh, intuitively i thought it should not be losing here correct okay so this was a good idea here but he went rook a b1 uh yeah rook a b1 i i did not understand because anyway i want to play queen c4 and bring the queen to f4 uh and he is kind of helping me uh here so by the way instead of rook b1 the winning idea here instead of queen g5 was knight g5 yeah exact uh, i was scared of this only during the game uh, knight g5 king g6 something like queen e3 uh, is the winning move bringing the queen to g3 and so on hmm. here i was thinking about again uh, like in some bishop c5 i was considering but queen c4 was my idea i think oops sorry queen uh, uh, here but bishop, bishop c5 be. queen uh, yeah first queen c4 sorry queen c4 hmm. and now i was thinking queen g3 queen f4 and i thought i can manage something but in uh, i think rook into d3 is winning here wow Rook into d3, rook g3, and if knight d3, queen d3. Wow. Yeah, and queen f5. Again, I think you can go queen g3. Nice. Yeah, and it would be game over soon. So instead of this idea, he went rook b1. Here you anyway went queen c4. This is a move you wanted to play since quite some time. Yeah. He went with his ambitious plan of queen h5, knight g5. that's his idea yeah exactly uh, and uh, i i found this knight f4 uh, stopping queen h5 mm. and if he goes queen h4 i i can always play knight e2 and exchange the queens nice so he went now rook c1 rook c1 uh, and here uh, i played a mistake actually my first instinct was, was to take on h6 mm. but then i saw rook into c4 uh, if bishop into g5 knight into g5 and black, white is winning i think like rook into c7 and so on yeah. but actually rook into c4 i can just take rook into c4 and the queen is kind of wow. trap like if queen h4 i can go knight e2 beautiful and, take the, yeah. and if queen g3 also knight e2 so the queen is knight trapped e2. yeah i miss this uh, Uh, resource and i played knight c2 mm. which is uh, already i i bishop h6 is just game over like he should probably resign but knight c2 already white is kind of holding so he played king a nice h- move king h1 i think he is preparing basically to avoid all knight yeah, e2 the, check ideas yeah now he is preparing queen h4 knight g5 and so on okay so it's becoming very exciting now he you took yeah i took queen h4 and then uh, i played this uh, knight d3 okay i so think you can give a check no that was his anyway the idea 
yeah but uh, because if, I, yeah if he goes king if you go king g8 you will he'll take right so you must come up yeah king g6 i think we both kind of uh, thought this is just winning for like queen g3 knight into f2 and i thought something will be there like, and then i can bring my knight to g4 uh, but then white can just take on f2 uh, and uh, sama is just fine like bishop into g5 uh, i think he can just take on g5 and and king takes would be very risky because of yeah, very risky. queen f6 check and stuff and also this check does not kill him because king g1 and he is still okay yeah and probably something like queen c5 should play if not if king g5 is not working then right right yeah also king g5 queen f6 is there so so queen c5 and then maybe this is round about yeah. even yeah the computer was actually giving instead of bishop g5 something like queen g4 but uh, already i think white is more or less fine there also uh, obviously black is the one pressing instead yeah. of bishop instead of bishop into g5 ah okay here queen g4 the point is he cannot take on c2 because of queen d1 so and then computer was giving uh, around minus 1 or little bit uh, mm. lower to that but i think already the momentum is gone correct so yeah anyway in the game he went to h5 uh, abhijit yeah. is like let me go knight g5 and just finish the game yeah exactly I, and uh, by this point i think we both uh, didn't have much time uh he was playing in seconds and i had probably like uh, two minutes or like uh, one minute something like that so you two and knight f2 king g1 knight g4 king h2 is bad because your queen can join in yes queen f4 and yeah queen f4 probably so yeah i did not consider king h2 at all but yeah probably king g1 king yeah g1. and then i saw this knight g4 and i thought the game is over <laughs> but in reality there were there were more dra- uh, drama uh, drama followed <laughs> so now, now your uh, knight defends the bishop and uh, the queen defends the knight so everything looks at least for the time being fine yeah and my rook on c7 does a very important job def- defending f7 yes this was the key move of the game uh, yeah. he, if he takes here uh, this is queen c2 queen g4 actually for rook c2 i thought uh, queen d4 check is there and i'm winning on the spot like oh, if rook into wow. d4 rook b1 oh wow what a nice line what a nice line so queen d4 and if he moves the king f1 uh, queen d1 is hanging and if h1 yeah. also d1 is hanging so okay queen d1. so queen d4 is a killer Yeah I think probably I shouldn't have seen such lines because in the game also I played uh, queen d4 <laughs> Yeah and here uh, like I had 1 uh, minute around 30 seconds or 1 minute 20 seconds and then most of my time I was thinking queen f4 hmm. and uh, the, the thing is I was worried about rook d1 and is threatening some rook d8 and so on but okay I thought if queen into d2 with the same idea maybe you can take on g4 no but and take here is just over with this so yeah this is over but g4. i was worried about queen g4 and i stopped my variation here initially hmm. and i thought okay it's complicated but uh, knight e3 is just uh, resigns ooh what a fork yeah and then like i thought about this for 30 seconds maybe and then i looked for alternatives and then i saw queen d4 which i thought was brilliant because if rook into d4 knight into d4 like let's say he takes on c7 i give a mate and uh, ideally when you are going through the calculation fast you would see rook e1 defending knight e2 mm. and you would see knight e2 check anyway and then uh, if king oh, f1 oh, or something king f1 or h1 both moves lose to knight g3 knight g3 knight h5 so he, me and my opponent abhijit also saw this whole variation and then thought it's a brilliant move and also while when i played queen d4 i remember like i i was like this and i was i could see just abhijit's face and suddenly like deepan chakravarty 
he was like he peaked in like this he is just uh, he was just looking at the game in shock actually yeah and a um, lot of spectators also told me after the game initially they thought queen d4 was a brilliant move hmm. but when they turned on the engine uh, they realized it was a blunder losing blunder <laughs> and hey, here uh, here actually it's not so simple but i mean if someone looks with a fresh eye then they would see that the yeah, knight exactly. is ugly yeah queen g4 at least he could have taken on d4 and then thought so what to do no, and no. he would have found for <laughs> yes i mean if he took... and, when, and when he saw like where when he was thinking like uh, initially i didn't see the queen into g4 but when he had like 15 or 20 seconds i saw that he could take on oh, g4 you saw it yeah and then i was cursing myself why did i play queen d4 <laughs> like any basic move was winning in this position The only losing move in this position would be queen d4 and I play. <laughs> so queen d4 check and he didn't take it which yeah, must have come as such a relief to you. Yeah exactly I was just really like king h1 and uh, this is just winning and queen g4 queen c1 king h2 like uh, around this point 40 move has been reached and I was thinking like I could have uh, I, I get another thirty minutes. You can so win in just, so many ways. Yeah, yeah. He just resigned uh, uh, without waiting for my move. Yeah, maybe the easiest way to finish it is knight e three. Yeah, I was going to play knight e three, uh, and then he just resigned. Nice. Wow, what a game this was! It was like uh, I would say a grand struggle uh, to win the title, and uh, maybe one of your most memorable games. Now I see why. you decided to choose this game as your favorite even though it was filled with many inaccuracies it was a, a huge fight yeah exactly i think uh, like objectively the game was probably very bad but from a, uh, like as a chess fan you would uh, even if i was a spectator i would be excited to see this game yeah for sure and uh, yeah besides i was playing so it was um, very memorable for me amazing and just uh, very lightly i wanted to get your thoughts on this game against kostov uh, because uh, i believe this was also a very important game but i think one of the things that works slightly in your favor i don't know how much is that he had achieved his title a day before so that generally help uh, makes players a little bit uh, relaxed yeah actually i did not know that he became grandmaster uh, on that day <laughs> i was just playing normally but later after i finished my game uh, someone told me that uh, he had become gm like i think two days ago or something okay uh, two days or one day ago, i'm not sure so right so it was just, okay this this game was in the morning so i did not prepare much uh, so this was basically preparation for my game against mitra ba but he did not play the catlan yeah this um, line i i have seen uh, quite a few top players playing but i uh, i mean here uh, you took this move uh, which looked very dubious right taking on b3 uh actually uh, i just know that queen c2 is not the best. bishop b2 was the best move and that i had some preparation there hmm. i did not uh, see queen c2 so i generally the my logic was that now if i take on b3 you would lose a tempo that was my logic ah. uh but okay uh, h4 was a better move i think uh, correct. correct pushing the pawn here would have been much better but you took took bishop takes queen takes knight d5 makes d5. a lot of sense a6 yeah and then uh, i think already i am much better but you should have played something else i don't know exactly what but uh because there is no attack for him um like bishop d2 first i stop e4 with f5 hmm and then uh, like he doesn't really this only plan is b4 b5 yeah can he do that yeah like my plan always is to play knight a7 and stop it completely nice 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 and uh, there's no b5 anymore like i would even play c6 if needed correct so in the game that actually happened you went first you sort of stopped all of his ideas yeah, active actually, uh, i should have played for h4 and uh, if b4 then knight a7 but i wanted to play like petrosian first prevent everything and then 
to go for something but after h4 i realized uh, it was a stupid mistake <laughs> but, but can you not just go like now tal like g g5 h4 yeah, but, but g i was thinking g5 but uh, i think one problem is e4 Instead and if uh, taking yeah you even take yeah one is i was worried about this fe4 bishop into g5 and also even h into g5 uh, for example h4 uh, g h4 rook h4 i thought he would play something like f4 and so on like i don't know how good is this one hmm. but i think e4 is a much bigger problem yeah, than f4 this four is very strong correct so you went knight b5 rook c1 rook c8 yeah, yeah you you yeah, are I'm... doing like petrosian yeah all yeah. safety first but a year already he had like very less time maybe less than 3 minutes or something and uh, so basically i was playing just for the time in a way okay queen b1 knight f i wanted to eventually play e5 so i was just playing uh, random moves so you won't understand and then i would get oh that's psychology there knight d5 c6 rook d1 queen g7 ah okay so you just put him under he had no time and now finally you got yeah, yeah. yeah and then here he blundered uh, tactically ah uh, he allowed this because uh, now now the queen is attacked so he took on d5 yeah which is a losing blunder like uh, he thought you uh, were telling me that i would take on uh, d5 with the knight and he thought it's a better version uh, than bishop into c3 directly hmm. but he forgot i could take on e2 yeah. take 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 on c and now i win an exchange nice and you just won the game wow yeah very cool so that was uh, uh, the, your another important win and then last round i think you were okay with a draw anyway uh not exactly because if abjit had won uh, uh, i think he would win the championship uh, mm. with bukols mm. so i was not sure what to play for uh, to play for a draw or something but uh, in the opening i was much much worse so the only option was to play for a draw and abhijit <laughs> and then, uh, abhijit was facing uh, in that round uh, i Sainten, think uh, who managed to actually hold him to a draw Yeah, actually, in the opening, Sainten was better, just better. Like a dream position, he could get in the position, and only White, White could have won. Uh, Sainten could have won. Mm. But then, um, after few hours, uh, the tables turned, and uh, Abhijit was pressing for like five hours or something. And you would have been sitting on the edge yeah. of your seat because your national title was at stake. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, even this uh, live stream stopped at some point, and I was uh, very nervous like, to know what happened. Nice, nice. Wow, amazing, Karthik. That was really a great uh, journey. Would you uh, say this is the biggest achievement of your chess career till date? I mean, probably uh, since it's national level, yes, but in general, I, I don't think I played uh, really well. Uh, i thought i played okay and uh, some of uh, things turned out well uh, from the game point of view i think this is nowhere near my best tournament but uh, since it's uh, nationals and i'm qualified to the world cup it's special so does this uh, achievement give you extra motivation now to work on your chess i guess the world cup will happen somewhere uh, towards august 23 or so on right Yes, uh, around uh, uh, it's uh, the estimated date is like July twenty eight or something, but I'm not sure. And the place also has not been confirmed. Uh, so yeah, this gives extra motivation for me to uh, work on matches. Fantastic! Well, we are very excited uh, for your and uh, for your preparation towards the World Cup, and also a huge congratulations for winning this title. and uh, any any tournaments planned up now for for the next coming days um there's nothing to play actually i wanted to play delhi but it got cancelled so i won't be playing uh, until Feb- february at least cool well hopefully you will get a lot of time to prepare and uh, well good luck kartik
thank you for thank your time. you sir thanks for inviting me